All right, fellow fact checkers. Now, before we start the show, I want to remind you to head over and check out our great sponsor, Fox and Son Coffee. Uh, they've got an amazing deal with all kinds of blends going on. So head over there and check it out. You can get the Mexican honey prep, the Brazilian honey prep, the Guatemalan, the Ethiopian. They'll be adding new roasts regularly. So be sure to check in and see what new flavors Steve has got over at Fox and Son Coffee. They've also got all of your usual favorites the Den Blend Dark, the Den Blend Light, and the one that we personally like around the house since uh, we can't seem to agree on which of the light or the dark is better for both me and the wife, the Den Blend 2 Electric Boogaloo, which is the medium roast. So be sure to use the checkout code FCT for fact check this at checkout and that'll get you an 18% discount on any order of $25 or more. Also, any order of $37.99 or more gets you free shipping. Load up on all the greatest coffee on the market, and you can thank me later. Well, let's start the show. Check this podcast and the first edition of the second recurring theme show that'll be going on this year. This one is Becoming Your Own Grocery with my very good friend, Dag. And we are going to, over the course of the year and doing a number of different episodes, we're going to talk about how you can uh, build up foods to a, a good food supply, uh, how to how to be a competent gardener. If you're interested, how to raise and care for and breed and all of that stuff with livestock, uh, even how to prepare your own meat and do a little bit of butchering. Uh, So we're going to cover a bunch of stuff just sort of focused around how can you be less dependent on the grocery store down the road and more self-sufficient. Let's kind of talk about that the the self-sufficiency idea because i think a lot of people have um a lot of people do get this idea that they're gonna like plant a garden and suddenly never have to go to the grocery store again (laughs) it's it's an it's an unrealistic it's it's a noble idea but it's an unrealistic expectation like you're not uh odds are you're you're not going to grow wheat and barley and all the things that you need to make your own bread without having to make a trip to the grocery store for something like you're 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 not going to become uh your own grocery store (laughs) exactly but we do want to reach a point where you have all of the essentials that when shit really hits the fan you're you're going to be all right let's let's kind of talk about that (laughs) to to lead into the rest of the conversation because that uh, and that's that's something that you wanted to really touch on was um why we're doing this Right. So um, first off, thanks for having me on. I've really been looking forward to this and doing this uh, this series here with you. So um, thank you. Um, but yeah, I, um, you know, we talked about it briefly before the show. It's really, you know, you said the words right there, like shit hits the fan. And that's sort of something that everybody, when they think like, you know, prepper or, you know, um, just, just any of this stuff, like it's a shit hit the fan scenario. And that's kind of like that's kind of bad on like all sides because you get, you get people preparing for the wrong scenario. First off, if, if, if shit hits the fan or zombie apocalypse or something like that's not going to be pretty. Most of us, even us prepared people are going to be dead. You know, (laughs) like you have a little better shot, but you know, that's not really a realistic thing. Um, So we want to think about what we were preparing for first off uh, and, and why, and then what's practical. We don't want to do things that's going to waste our money. We don't want to put ourselves in debt you know, in order to, 
you know, build a, buy a bunch of Patriot buckets or, or something silly like that. You know, you just really want to be realistic about what we're planning for. Let me actually just start. Um, I want to, this was on Instagram uh, from somebody who is a good follow, Sky Pirate Actual. Does a lot of lock picking stuff and a lot of like, you know, realistic scenarios that like you might want to think about, you know, like, okay, let's say there's a riot in the city near you. Okay. And it's four blocks away from, and this is a real exercise he did on his thing and, you know, had a lot of feedback. It's really interesting, but there's, it's four blocks away from where your wife works right? Like what is, what are you going to do? The cops aren't going to help. Right. I mean, we saw what happened, you know, a couple summers ago, like, you know, these are things to think about. He's like, get on Google maps, like look it up, you know, um, other exercises, like get on Google maps around your house. Where are the nearest water sources? You know, just things like that that are good to know that you might not think about. Anyhow, sorry, I'm getting sidetracked his post. Um, and actually shared it from somebody else. It's actually not his post. I'm sorry. Um, he posted it, but it's from Carrie Stone, whoever that is Sloan. Uh, but at any rate, dystopian movies glamorizing the fall of civilization has given people serious delusions about what survival really looks like. And like, that's so true. And like, I, and trust me, guys, like I, as a kid, I read so many sci-fi books about like apocalyptic scenarios. It's really fun, right? Obviously, the zombie apocalypse had a big um, run, you know, on TV of being the popular thing. And it's, it's fun. Like, I get it. So I'm not even talking trash about that, like genre, but it's that's not really what we should be preparing for. You know, a more realistic situation that's going to happen to people is a storm comes through. I'm in Florida and we get hurricanes every couple of years. We lose power for a couple of weeks. You know, that's realistic. And that's something that we've gone through a couple of them very unprepared. And it was a very uncomfortable situation. Uh, we lost a lot of, um, you know, meat that we had in our freezers. Uh, it was just not having power for a few weeks really sucks. You know, um, the last storm we went through, we had generators. It was so much more comfortable. We didn't lose any meat. You know, we had television. Uh, it's, you know, it's just, and I know that's like a, a little frill, but like, it just really does just make everything feel a lot better. Um, otherwise it's, you know, it's a lot of just convenience for your life too. Like, I mean, when we, when we go to cook dinner and realize we don't have something that, we need to cook dinner. We don't really run to the store. We go out to our prepper pantry and just pull it because we have a little bit of everything. So that's really something I want to focus on tonight is how to build up a prepper pantry. And like, again, very realistically, very inexpensively, you're not going down to the store dropping hundreds of dollars at a time or anything like that. So that's, um, that's really a big thing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and like you were saying, like, you know, being prepared for a storm, something like that. Uh, when, when we first moved up here, uh, early part of last year, the it, this is a lot like we lived pretty rural before, but this is way way more rural than than what we were. And the first time, I I, I think I posted on Twitter. I was like, it's it's kind of hard realizing that in the event of the apocalypse, the f your first course of action is going to be to kill your wife and kids because they're such a huge liability. Like we <laughs> lost power at about five o'clock in the morning. And by 6 a.m., we had no hot water. Like everything was just, like everybody just freaked out. My wife decided to take a 30 minute shower. Uh, like y'all are going to flush the toilet after the first pee. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm like y'all y'all are killing us. Like the, you have you have all proven that you cannot handle the end of the world at all. Like you can't even handle the power goes out for and and we were without power for uh, two days. I think two the the better part of two days and i mean it was like summer it was hot you know we luckily we we had passes to uh holiday world which is the little theme park that's about uh 25 30 miles away and so we, we just went and spent the day there and and uh, did water slides and stuff like that and got away from the house but it's like mm -hmm. nobody in nobody in my family was prepared i'm like all right this is what we got to do to like get through the day and see if the power comes back on and they all fucked it up within the first hour it's like <laughs> oh my gosh so yeah like we went to a movie theater for air conditioning before yeah <laughs> so it's I get like, it. you know, being able to be prepared just for the basic stuff mm -hmm. because uh, it doesn't matter where you live or how you feel about climate change or or any of that kind of stuff or you know the environmental changes type stuff. There's going to be storms. You probably live somewhere that you either have storms, possibly tornadoes, hurricanes. You might be on uh, like 
we're we're in a nice place where we have a combination of uh, tornadoes, and we're also on like fault lines, so you always have the possibility of the big earthquake coming at some point. Um, oh goodness! Yeah, like you know, you never know. And and again, yeah, uh, just basic power outage. You know, mm-hmm. uh, losing a job. I mean, that's something that's happened to a lot of us. And you, you know, if you just don't have to buy groceries for three weeks, you know, <laughs> like that can be huge to getting you through that. You know. Uh, disaster. I mean, and that's, again, these are realistic things that can happen. So it's, you know, it's, I mean, it's kind of the equivalent of having money in the bank, you know, in a bank account for emergencies, but you have it, you know, supplied in the things you really need to live immediately. Um, do we want to, um, do we want to talk about the beans and rice, the beans and rice first, the beans and rice? Let's post? Do the, yes. Let's do the, let's do the beans and rice first. That's, uh, <laughs> Corey says you only, live, you only live once. Plus that, plus that. <laughs> Yeah, let's do some uh, some beans and rice uh, survival here. Uh, this is a, an interesting little thread. It's just some very like, um, as he says at the at the end of the first post of the thread, you are now minimally prepared to not starve. So quick, cheap food stockpiling. Buy a hundred pounds of rice. If you're paying more than a dollar a pound, you're getting ripped off. And buy a hundred pounds of dry beans. Buy six to eight food grade five gallon buckets and gamma seal lids, which are not particularly expensive. Um, as you can, you can see, get a Home Depot, pretty, Amazon, yeah, wherever. Yeah, wherever. They're they're really not they're not that mm. bad cost wise. Um, I you are now minimally prepared to not starve. The the rice and beans thing, like as long as you can keep them dry, they never go bad. Uh, you can um, store you can store that yeah, for they, almost forever. They don't really get better, but they don't, you know, go bad and they'll sustain you. Um, now, a couple things um, on this for the, this idea, which is great. I He's packing away a lot. I personally don't keep that much rice and beans. That's a lot of rice and beans. Um, but uh, I like the Gamma Seal lids. One thing to consider, though, is they do also make like five gallon totes that are square and have a decent snap on lid. And, you know, square stores better than circular, you know, cylindrical. So that might be something to consider. And then also... Um, you get like the, uh, you know, the little hand warmers, the, um, you know, you shake them up and they, they get hot. Like you put them in your pockets. Those are oxygen absorbers. You don't like activate them, but you toss one of those in the bucket. So it keeps the oxygen out of it. You know, it's like kind of like a desiccant pack. So put either a desiccant pack or like a hand warmer in there. And then, yeah, dude, I mean, they'll, they'll keep forever. It's, it's calories, it's carbs, it's energy. Um, ideally you wouldn't find yourself living off of it, but yeah, you should have at least have like a bucket if not two you know, that kind of thing of the rice and beans for sure. Um, six to eight. That's a lot. That's a lot of storage space, you know, but depending on your family and their needs too. I mean, if you got 10 kids, hell, you know, do the, do the math and figure out how much you need. But, but, um, but yeah, I, I love this post because this is a very good basic starting point. And one thing I liked about the post is just all the comments because you get people who say very reasonable things and you get people who say a lot of the silly, funny kind of stuff, you know, that we're, we're going to try to avoid with this, <laughs> with this series. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I definitely recommend storing a lot of better food too. And like canned meats and stuff. That's something that people often overlook. Uh, one of my favorites is like sardines. They're like a buck 25 a can. And it's dude, I'll eat them as like a, like a snack or a meal when I'm like working or something, you know, like I keep a couple in my car even, but you know, canned meat, you know, that's a really good new nutrition factor too. Uh, so we've got some questions in the chat uh, from from Mo over on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it. Got any places for the food you know to get stuff that's not been stored pro- uh, improperly before you get it? And um, like what to do with that? Um, I, I get I get most of mine. Uh, we've I've bought 25 pounds of rice. Yeah, I, I don't I don't do 100 pounds either. Um, I guess if I was really, really in the prepping uh more in prepping and and less in just like having something on hand for for the short term uh usually i get about 25 pounds at a time and then we'll we'll go through that over the course of a year or so um and then with the beans i think i'd have to check what we've gotten now we it we usually have between five and ten pounds of beans and like we'll we'll go through that over the course of a year and then just kind of build it back up as we go um i got we get all of ours at sam's and i've never had any problem with the 
the packaging or what we get at Sam's, it's relatively cost yeah, effective. I'm uh-huh. curious what he says that it went bad. Like um what um what 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 happened? I just feel like if it's if it's kept dry and everything, I mean but but yeah, I mean if it if it got wet before you got it or something, you know, so I guess it'd just be a reputable store. And something else somewhere where it doesn't sit around, dude, like go to for like rice and beans, go to like a Mexican supermarket or something. Ah, uh, there's they sell uh, yeah. So this is where this is where having it sealed <laughs> up properly is. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Bugs, yeah. The weevils, bugs. They they love rice. They love mm-hmm. wheat. Um, I'd probably know. put them in another bag too. Yeah, you know, put yeah, them like it, in some gallon ziplocs. Pack them away in that. So at least there's a couple layers. And if one of them gets contaminated, hopefully the whole bucket doesn't go bad. Yeah, yeah. bugs. Yeah, that that's a very that's something you really got to be careful for. That's on my list here. Bugs and uh rodents as well uh rats and everything so when you have your plastic buckets and your plastic totes they can still chew through that so you do have to be aware wherever you keep your prepper stuff you know obviously you should be somewhere safe and dry and etc cetera, etc cetera. but it does not hurt to have some just preventative rat traps <laughs> you know laying around in there check it from time to time make sure you don't see droppings uh because that'll be a really big one too uh, and, would, be, uh would be at rodents and as far as the, <laughs> as far as the bugs go um as long as you have it in a secure like airtight container the bugs shouldn't shouldn't be a problem and then you can also put some uh um what's the diametic earth or whatever like diatomaceous earth yeah di- yeah diatomaceous earth i always that's one uh that's a tough one that, what's the other word that i always fuck up on the uh on the morning show um fem fem femin Feminim, feminim, oh, femininity, femininity. Femin, femininity. That's, femininity. Yeah, <laughs> Di- diatomaceous and femininity. Those are the ones that uh, my country accent is just too strong for these highbrow words. But uh, yeah, get some of that and just like put it around where you've got it, where you've got it stored, um, and that that should be a good preventative yeah. layer. Yeah. Like they're not gonna, they're not gonna cross, they're not gonna cross that very easily. Uh, it's so one yeah. of my favorite things for ants too, because the, the ants can be notoriously difficult to get rid of, um, and we deal with that a lot in Florida. So, uh, and it's not like toxic, so it's just you know right. if you're, yeah, if you're safety minded in that regard, um, it's yeah. nice. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah, some, yeah, that's some good basic storage. Like keep it dry, keep it sealed up, air airtight mm-hmm. as best you can. You should be good in that. Like um, yeah. And then the rice and beans is a forever thing. I mean, you can rotate it. You know what I mean? Like, and I would probably keep a large store that I would also rotate. Like, so I'd say like a good starting point would be like a five gallon thing of like rice and beans or one of each if you want, you know, but start with that. It's inexpensive. One is that's a lot of food. And again, that's not something you're going to, you're in a bad situation if you're into that bucket, you know? (laughs) So, you know, that's, that's forever. That sits back there for 30 years. You just make sure it doesn't go, you know, doesn't get infested and hold on to it. And then maybe, you know, like Justin does there buy 25 pounds at a time. Um, And I do things like when something's on sale, you know, uh, two for ones, whatever, I go ahead and grab a few and then, you know, use FIFO. If you've ever worked food service first in first out, right? So, Put your new stuff on the back. Take your old stuff first. Uh, keep an eye on expiration dates if you believe in that kind of thing. And just try to, you know, just try to, you know, rotate them out best you can. And here, here's the thing. when it, So let's put the bucket of rice and beans aside. We've, we've covered that. That's there. Now let's talk about the rest of the stuff. And that's going to be stuff you use. Don't buy a bunch of stuff that you don't like eating and your family doesn't like eating. Right. First off, buy stuff that you eat. So if you guys, um, yeah, tuna typically when um, I get it and you get it and it's not like super discounted, it'll have like five years on the can. I'm not going to tell people that you can eat stuff past the date on the can, but do some research on that. You can usually, you know, it's 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 if it's stored well again, you know, don't if I leave canned food out in like my own air conditioned sheds, they get rusty. And like that's when you got to start like that, that can be dangerous. Uh, if you do get a can, it's got a little bit of rust. Make sure you take the food out of it. Check the inside before you eat it. Make sure there's no rust on the inside. But that's the kind of thing you want to avoid. If a can's not rusty, I mean, I've it's probably not going to kill you to eat it at any point. It just will just deteriorate in quality over time. Uh, we do, yeah, we keep a ton of tuna, um, a ton of canned chicken. Uh, you know, good meats like that are nice. And again, it's stuff that we use. So you just, you know, we just rotate it out. I went the other day and actually went through all my stuff and found a bunch of stuff that's 2023, 2024. And, you know, 
moved it to a shelf a little closer and said, all right, this stuff's got to get eaten. Um, I like canned beans uh, as well. One thing that you have to remember with your, I know we said we're going to put it aside for now, but the beans and rice bucket is that that stuff all takes water to cook. So we'll get into water storage as well, but you have to have water to cook it. A can of beans is already in liquid. So there can be, you know, that can be something that's nice to have on hand because you might not have to dip into your water supply to cook it. Uh, but again, make it stuff to eat. If you don't like beans, you know, cans of beans, if you don't eat them that often, don't go buy them. You know, do whatever you do eat and just keep that in rotation. And then some people, like if you're really meticulous, and this is probably a better recommendation, I just, I don't follow this because I'm just not this organized. But what a lot of people recommend to do this is you keep like a food journal. So put a notepad in your kitchen and every time you or someone in your family eat something, you write it down. And when they eat it twice, you know, hashtag it or mark it or whatever, you know, so that you know how much you're eating. And then you know what you go through in a month. And then your goal is build up an extra month's reserve. So you can do it one item at a time. You can go to the store and do the whole month at a time if you want. But if you don't want to go drop a hundred bucks, you know, you can do it an item at a time. So just when you go to buy beans, instead of buying one can, buy two cans or, you know, tuna fish, if you guys eat a lot of tuna or whatever the item is. Okay. For us, boxes of cornbread, the Jiffy cornbread mix, right? We might go through, let's say four boxes a month. So just next time we go to the store, okay, buy eight. And then, you know, you go back to buying four, but then you have a whole month's worth and you just do that with all of your items. And then once you do that, do it again, do it again, you know, and if you have a month, two months, three months, I mean, anything like that is just gravy. So just the best you can do. And that's just an inexpensive way to get around it. When something's on sale, buy a couple extras. One. Well, and so one of the things that you had talked about a minute ago and kind of mentioned briefly was um, like, if you've got your cans in a, in a shed or something where you don't have air conditioning um, that, you know, they'll start to rust, being able to maintain some level of climate control in whatever space that you're going to be storing your stuff in, like th think that kind of thing through, and, and be prepared for that. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, an air conditioning unit. You just have to have, you need to have good airflow to keep things, to keep things cool, to keep things dry. You don't, you know, you don't want it to get real humid and stuffy and, and in whatever your storage space is, you want it to be cool and dry as much as humanly possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like being, it, it doesn't take a lot to be cost effective on that. Like, to uh you don't have to have a, a a window unit or something like that for your storage shed you just need to have fans and and a a, a way to keep air flowing through the through wherever you're storing your stuff like if you have like a basement basements are dank right but they're cool but what right. if like you put your cans in a big tote and then put a like a desiccant pack in the tote or one of those hand warmers in the tote or like the uh, the gun safe desiccant things that you can like you take out and you plug into the wall and they they refresh so they're actually reusable and you're not you know put one of those in there and just set a reminder on your you know calendar app to remind you every six months to go charge the thing and check on everything but uh but yeah i mean something like that there's there's definitely a way around it because we all have limited storage space too you know and we should probably do an episode about getting the family on board because that can always be a challenge you know your the wife might not want a tote of your crazy prepper stuff in the back of the pantry so you know you might have to find a way to do it where it's not in the way and they don't notice as much um but you know it's, you might end up something you gotta deal with garage, yeah. never. <laughs> uh, but yeah it can be um sometimes the the spouse isn't on board um but you know that's why you can but like with this method though you just do a few cans at a time and they don't even realize that suddenly you have you know a bunch of extra stuff and then when the convenience factor kicks in again like when Oh, a couple months ago, we wanted to make fettuccine Alfredo out of sauce. Oh, no, wait, we have six jars outside that I completely forgot we even had, you know, but you know this, living in the country, it's an hour round trip to go pick up a can of sauce. So, well, and I was like, just... um, and you were talking about like buying stuff when it's on sale, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, you you can't see it, but over my shoulder over there is a, a big deep freeze and it is filled to the top. I will, our local little grocery store every week has sales on meat or like the discount meat that's about to go bad or something or that's, you know, hitting its expiration date. And so I'll go in, load up on all the stuff that's on sale and then just keep the freezer packed. And then oh, I go yeah. through, I go through and dig stuff out every week and put stuff in the fridge to thaw that we'll eat during the course of the week. But, um, <laughs> My my wife has no idea how full that thing is. She we were we went to the store uh, a couple weekends ago and she was getting a bunch of stuff. She was like, "I need you to put all this stuff in the in your freezer out there." I was like, um, "That freezer's full. 
Like I keep that thing full. We we will never run out of meat as long as as long as I'm living here. Like it's it is full. Uh, she she severely underestimated how much meat I buy <laughs> every week. And I and it's I mean it's all cheap. Like it's I find the I find the good deals. I rotate stuff out. Uh, we have plenty to eat, and we have plenty plenty set aside for just in case. And and I I finally got. Uh, I've got a couple good generators now and like, uh, cause that was, that was the tough thing when we were losing power last year when we first moved up here. Um, we hadn't, we, we were fortunate where we lived before that we were literally right down the road from the power plant. So like something major would have to happen for us to lose power. Uh, I think in the entire time we lived there, we only lost power like once. Um, hey, you're first in line, man. They got to get you. It's like a Christmas lights, you know. You, yeah. They got to get you running before they get everyone else running. Right. So, like, we we only lost power for like some hours one time, and you know it wasn't really a big deal. Well, out here, you know, this is we're in the middle of nowhere, so uh, some hours is like at minimum, and so we're having to like run to the store and keep the freezers packed with ice and stuff, and uh, like we managed to we managed to not lose anything, but it was it was kind of stressful and, mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, put us in one of those positions where it's like, Oh shit, you know, we might want to be a little more prepared for this out here. So there's a lot of money in the freezers, you know, sitting in there and, and you know, if, if the power does go out, they don't have to be, you don't have to keep the generator on them constantly run it right. for an hour, a few times a day, throw some heavy blankets on top of it, you know, and, and they'll be fine for a while. Uh, one thing I definitely recommend uh, because having a big freezer full of meat, you can buy meat when it's on sale. Like you said, great idea you can buy a half a cow you you know you can have a place to when you find a place to get good meat stock up on it but power loss aside freezers can still break so i definitely recommend a freezer alarm and they have everything from like you know a 30 dollar unit you get on amazon that's got a, a, a sensor that goes in the freezer and then a screen that goes outside and it beeps if it gets below a certain temperature they also i think for like 60 bucks you can get one that will link to your like home network and go to your cell phone and alert your cell phone. So if you're not going, at, let's say the freezer's in a shed and you don't go out there every day and a freezer alarm that just makes a noise might not do you any good, it'll actually alert your phone and tell you if you're having an issue. So that's definitely something to consider. Uh, I've lost freezers full of meat before. Uh, it's not, it sucks. And I mean, for me, it was like chickens that we raised and butchered. So it was like extra heartbreaking. <laughs> you know, it wasn't just money, you know? Uh, so it's, you know, it sucks. So protect your investment. And that's a big thing with, with like the whole theme of this is you know it's it sucks to put all this away and then just lose it because of poor planning or an accident or something like that you know um also i, I made the patriot bucket joke before and i want to like stress like don't buy the stupid patriot buckets like or any of those versions of that um it's silly it's you know and i don't know it's just it's not typically the best food it's way overpriced you know uh get a few MREs or something, you know, if, if you want, that's probably not a bad idea at all. Uh, have a few of those on hand, but, but yeah, the, a lot of this, if, if they're selling it like on Hannity or something, like don't, <laughs> don't, don't buy that stuff. <laughs> all right. What do you want to talk about next? You want to talk about water? Yes. That is something that we definitely have to, uh, have to talk about. Uh, so, you know, we mentioned to cook your beans and rice and everything, but, you know, you need plenty of drinking water. You need water for hygiene. Uh, there's a lot of different recommendations and there's a lot of different ways to do it. So there's, you know, there's bulk water storage, which like a great idea is hooking up like, you know, your gutters to a big 500 gallon tank outside and having a ton of water like that. And yes, that's great. But before you get there, uh, I definitely think about having like you can keep gallon jugs that like you buy at the store. The gallon jugs that are similar to milk jugs, though, be aware, they will eventually develop leaks like over the course of time. I've had that. Ha you just, oh, man, my pantry's full of water because one of the jugs just decided to give out. Uh, so be careful with those. Uh, an alternative and you can go buy like water cubes and this and that, but they're kind of pricey and it's kind of unnecessary. Uh, and that's just like a brand of, uh, you know, these water tanks that are square and stack. And this and that. And they are cool, but, you know, they're pricey. Uh, what a lot of people like to do is use, like, something that's a different type of plastic. So something that had soda or apple juice or something in it is made from much stronger plastic that's made to, like, resist acid uh, and this and that. So, like, the two-liter jugs or, like, an Arizona iced tea jug or, like, the half-gallon juice jugs work really well. I like half-gallon juice jugs because they're actually square-shaped and they stack together really well. 
clean them out real good. You don't need to put bleach in the water. If, if the water's not going to be safe to drink in two years, it's not safe to drink now. So, you know, like just make sure it's really clean and, you know, put that like in the back of your pantry or a shed. A lot of people recommend 20 gallons per person. That's a lot of water, uh, but that's probably not a bad recommendation. Uh, water is very important. So you don't really want to skimp on it. And then you can rotate it out, you know, it, so it doesn't get stale. Use some of the water, water your plants with it, refill the jugs, put them in the back. Again, FIFO. Uh, but yeah, I definitely start with that. I've got five or six gallons in my pantry just here and just the regular water jugs, you know, nothing, nothing fancy, but we, you know, we use them, we rotate them out. And then we have like a, I think it's like a 500 gallon tank outside that I try to keep, you know, full. I think it's a little scummy sometimes, but nothing boiling. It wouldn't, you know, wouldn't fix, or we have, you know, we have a lot of animals. So if we can't pull water from the ground out of our well, for whatever reason, they need many, many gallons of water, uh, you know, a day. So you got to keep that on hand. So think about your pets, think about your livestock, you know, and, a day, a week, two weeks. Do you have water sources nearby? Do you get your water from your own well? Is it from the city? You know, it's a lot of things to consider. If power goes out, we can hook a generator up to our well and still pull water. Uh, sometimes if you live in the city and your power goes out, you still have water because, you know, it's coming from somewhere else. So all that can be things to consider. Is there a pond nearby? <laughs> you know, That's, do you live somewhere we're very, natural water? We're very fortunate out here. We have a, uh, like a wildlife preservation type of a thing that's, like right, right down the road. And there's a bunch of like creeks and streams that feed into a, they, they call it a river. I grew up on the Mississippi river. So anything like smaller than the Ohio, I just can't view it as a, as a river, but they call it a river. Um, it's a moving, uh, it's a moving body of water. It, um, but like we have, we have water sources nearby that we can, and it's all, for the most part, it's fine. Like, like you said, nothing that boiling isn't gonna isn't gonna fix. Uh, you should so, have a couple of life straws or something, you know, a way to purify yeah. water. Yeah. And we've also got a we've got a well on the property that can that can be retapped into. Like it's still it's still there. Uh, I guess whenever whenever they had uh, there's a it's like a community well type of a thing. It's city water more or less. It's uh, the county has its own water supply. Um, whenever that came in, my wife's grandparents had it hooked up at both houses, but both houses also still have independent wells that if need be, we could tap back into. So, you know, and, and luckily we also know people who do that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the things is uh, that we'll talk about possibly later on. And, and it's also something that, uh, Don, the pleb, and I talked about last week was like making connections with people. Like I know yes. mechanics and guys who do glass and the you know do glass work, uh, body body shop guys, you know plumbers, electricians, uh, like construction guys. Like no people. And Community is like a yeah, huge part. Yeah, of this. having good yeah. connections uh, mm -hmm. is invaluable. Like we know the people that could come out and hook the well back up with minimal you know, uh, problems. So it, I mean, if you don't know your neighbors, you know, at least we're me and my neighbors, we all talk maybe like once a year or something, you know, and it's always a good conversation, you know, but we, we live in the country for a reason, right. But we're all friendly and we all know who's got what, as far as, oh man, homeboy's got a tractor. Um, I, it took me a year before I found out that our newish neighbors, the guy was a medic in the military. And it's like, dude, that's great to know, you know, cause the hospital's 30 minutes away, which depending on the crisis is either very close or very far, you know, and having somebody who is experienced with trauma right next door, you know, is good to have in case, you know, I run my foot over with a lawnmower or something. So, and I even said like, Hey man, like if I have questions about some of this stuff, would you show me how to do a tourniquet and everything? And he's like, Oh yeah, man, no problem. You know, get the, get the things, you know, we'll, you know, we'll do a little, you know, a little workshop, you know, so, you know, you can, you can trade just skills with uh, with your neighbors too not just performing them but educationally too you know what can you guys teach each other to help each other that's it community and just you know working with your neighbors is huge to all this and you know i mean you would hope that you live in a place where if there was some sort of crisis that you wouldn't be worried about your neighbors as like predators you know that you would look to like you would go and check on your neighbors and you would expect them to do the same for you and you know if you don't live in a place like that that's probably something to consider changing first um just 
especially if you have kids, dude. I mean, you don't want to. I look at some of the places I used to live, you know, just as a young person, and I'm just like, there were families who lived like in the same neighborhood. That was horrible. <laughs> like it was horrible. I couldn't imagine having kids in some of the places I'd live, you know. Um, so anyhow, uh, but yeah, I mean, if you live in one of these terrible cities, I'd probably recommend getting out. But I might be a little biased, you know. I don't, I don't like those places. Uh, but uh, you know, if shit hits the fan or worse, you know, I kind of like the country. <laughs> yeah, and and I mean that's probably less disruption in the country. Just because I understand people for in some general people. are more prepared. Yeah, and I understand, like, for some people, you may be in the city because that's where you, where you have to be. Like, you don't have an option. You can't get out into the country, be it um, affordability or, or just... Definitely not trashing anybody when I say yeah, that. Like, I want to be clear about that, yeah. <laughs> and if that's the case, do the best you can to yeah. secure your, like, you know, secure your space and, and make sure you got your shit under control. Like, that, that's that's the best that you can do. Uh, if, you, if you can't build community, at least build your own uh little fortress that you can that you can hold down and there's uh, plenty of good neighborhoods and cities and stuff too you know it's just being a good place <laughs> so the water thing i've always heard like put a drop or two of vinegar in it um it does that I, I, we uh at our old I've house heard that. i've heard a drop or two of bleach and, I, and i'm like i guess bleach uh, is kind of toxic but it probably would but but i just and I mean, here, okay, here's a good test that I like to do. And I'll do this from time to time with my water for my well. I'll put it in like a, take it from the well, put it in a plastic water bottle and toss that bitch in the sun for a while. And if it doesn't grow algae or anything, like if nothing grows in there, like it's probably fine. You can have your water tested too, you know, like, and from time to time, if you have a well, it's not a bad idea. Cause I think like, oh, what, not botulism, is it something like there's like bacteria that can grow in your well. If like, it gets like contaminated with something so you can have it tested just to be safe but but yeah man i think if if you're drinking it and you're fine you should be fine to just store it uh, well, they like make that. like tablets and solutions and stuff too if you want to buy something if it makes you feel better i always kept about 25 30 gallons on hand at our old house i haven't started uh i haven't started building my my water store back up here uh, since we since we moved but uh that that's coming that's one of the next steps once i uh, once I get this big shed over here by the house cleaned out and, and all like uh, set up, that's then I'm going to start working on some of that stuff that some of the stuff that I used to do. And then when we moved, I kind of put it to the side while I just gutted and rebuilt houses and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, building up a water supply is, is one of the things that I'm intending to get back into this year. But, yeah, I never put. I never put vinegar or bleach or anything in any of our water. And anytime, anytime I would use any of it, like I didn't, I'm still alive. So yeah, it's there's, there's water is just water, dude. You know, <laughs> there's stuff in it. It's not safe. One thing that you have to do, you can't boil out like, um, like, um, mineral impurities, like toxins like that. So do be aware. Like if the water is like, like a scummy puddle is one thing, but like, yeah, if it's like, run off from an oil refinery like you know don't, don't boil that and drink it right <laughs> you know um but uh so yeah have your water so that's not even even an issue um I, the only other thing it looks like i had on my list here um is like as far as like food preservation styles um things to keep around like um you know growing your own food you can have stuff on hand at the time that's great but also with growing your own food you can can and preserve a lot of your own stuff which is great so learn how to can and that'll a not only save you money, but give you much better quality stuff, and give you something to do with that bumper crop of whatever you know. And oh my God, what am I going to do with all these tomatoes or beets or what have you? You can can them up. Uh, the my wife recently started canning chicken of ours that she pressure canned, so we have cans of chicken breast. So you know that's something. Um, but freeze drying is supposedly like one of the best ways to store food as far as longevity, and it's also very lightweight. Uh, so that's really cool. So you can buy freeze dried stuff. It's very expensive. You can buy a freeze dryer. They are also very expensive. They're not, I mean, we're talking a couple grand. It's not, you know, out of this world expensive. It's just something that's a very big investment. You can build your own. I personally don't know what's involved with that. 
Um, I feel like buying a small one is probably the way to go if you wanted to do it. But a couple ideas I've heard that I do like for the freeze dryers is a find a way to make money off of it. So people do things. If you've ever been to a farmer's market and seen people sell like freeze dried Skittles and freeze dried candy and stuff, they like explode and they, they like they come out and they look funny and they taste really good. So you can make some money off of it to make some of your money back. You could go in on it with, let's say, some of your neighbors and you all use it to preserve your own stuff. Um, there's people who will like get one and then like, OK, you bring you bring me your deer meat that you want me to freeze dry for you. And I do that, but I keep 25 percent of it, you know, like stuff like that. So there are things you can work out. But freeze drying is supposedly like the best. So if you have a method to do that, that's really cool. I don't, you know, I don't have anything like that. And a lot of the stuff that I'm saying to you guys tonight as well, and you'll hear me say is like, I do a lot of it or I'm working on a lot of it, but I am i don't have 20 gallons of water in my house, you know, for me and my wife. You know, we have it here, you know, we're, we're getting better. I'm not perfect at this stuff either. So, you know, you don't, we, we all just try to do a little bit better. You know, we just try to be a little bit better all the time, you know, because, you know, again, reality, you know, we all have life to live too. Uh, we've got a food dehydrator. And so like we can, you know, Oh yeah, those are good. And that, that's, uh, that stores really well. It, you know, it's, it's easy. It, they're usually not super big. They don't take up mm -hmm. space. They're not super expensive. I think relatively low wattage. Yeah, I think you the one operate them. A couple hundred bucks, maybe. Oh, yeah, that's for a big one, dude. Um, yeah. I've I've got them as little sixty bucks for a simple one. I got the wife a really nice electronic programmable all this stuff for like a hundred on Amazon. I I have one behind me. I built one myself, like out of like I use a reptile heat heat element. I put a thermostat in it and a computer fan, and I just wanted to I dehydrate chicken feet that we sell as dog treats. Um, but I just wanted to build a, one just for the chicken feet. So we're not mixing it up with, you know, the beef jerky and the, the kiwi and shit, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you can even just build your own. Like, it's it's not even that hard. Yeah, dehydrators are cool. And that's, yeah, you make jerky with that. And if you are in a scenario where you don't have access to a lot of power, again, they don't use a ton of power. So you can run them, you know, while you're running a generator and other stuff or solar panels or whatever. Um, that is something that's cool to have around. And again, a lot, with a lot of the stuff that you would that you would dehydrate uh, as long as you keep it relatively climate controlled and dry, it'll hold up for a long time. Uh, you know, it, then, and then you're not having to worry about freezing stuff and freezer going out. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, gosh, there are, there are some days that I, I think I basically just live off of deer jerky. Um, and <laughs> I'm fine with that. Uh, like, yeah, I, I don't want to do it every day for a, an extended period of time, but at the same time I could, uh, I have, yeah. I have the deer meat and I, and I have the dehydrator. So it'd be better I, than beans and rice. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's, we, we could, if we had to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you have a, uh, I'm, uh, this is probably a dumb question. Do you have a, a grinder, um, a meat grinder and do you have any like, uh, particular preference on that? I don't, I got, I got a really nice one. Um, it was a Christmas sale that they were running at the home Depot. So I got like a really big, nice one. And, and again, I deer hunt and stuff. So I, I use it fairly regularly. Um, but, and I don't know that having one is necessary, but it's mighty convenient. If you're going to get into like doing a lot of your own butchering or anything or like, okay. So you talk about buying sale meat. Uh, what I've been doing lately is at save a lot. <clears throat> they've got these big family packs of like these really ugly pork chops but it's a really good price. So I'll buy that and I'll trim them up and I'll cut out the good parts and I'll make beautiful pork chops. And that's what I'll cook and, you know, serve to the wife because she doesn't like the fatty bits. But now I have all this like bags of like good half fat, half pork, you know, that I just put in the freezer. And then once you get enough, what do you do with it? Well, you fucking make sausage, you know? So having a grinder or something can really be good if you're doing things like that. You know, once you get to that level, I have a grinder. I think it's like a six or 800 watt thing i got it off of amazon for like 100 bucks i've only ever used it once i probably made like 50 pounds of pork sausage and i haven't used it since but i've actually been talking a lot lately i want to break it out i want to start doing sausage because i've got all the stuff in my freezer that needs to get turned into sausage i'm trying to find a way to slip a little bit of organ meat into my diet so i figure if i can you know 
five percent of sausage meat have the organ meat. I don't know that I'm eating organs, <laughs> and I can I can get it down. You know, there's a lot of nutritional value in that, and I get a lot of it from the chickens. We usually make dog food out of it, but it kind of feels wasteful not eating some of it myself. So you know, you can get that into your diet that way. But it it is a good way to make use of the less desirable parts of the animal too. So if you do buy half a cow and you don't, you know, I don't, or a pig and you don't really like, you know, with the, the legs, the trotters or something, like at least you can cut the meat off and, and use it in something or just tougher bits of meat, fatty, whatever. It does give you a great way to use all that. So just in general, uh, I, I do think that's helpful to have. Cool. You got yeah. anything else? I think we've covered kind of the uh, starting to get yourself in a position to start prepping and, and storing up, building up some storage, uh, some stores of, of food, water, like just being in a position to, if something happens and you got to go for a couple weeks without, uh, without a, the luxuries of life, you're still going to be all right. And you're going to make it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, just, I, um, there was a very realistic circumstance that happened to all of us what, three years ago now, when, you know, back in 2020, we would go to the grocery store and remember the toilet paper thing? You know, there wasn't toilet paper forever. Well, guess what, dude, if you keep, we keep a pet, it's, it's the terrible Scott, you know, single ply toilet paper, but we've got 30 that we, and that's the thing, it sucks. So we don't use it. You know, we go buy good fluffy toilet paper when we need more toilet paper. But when the next crisis happens, there's no toilet paper in the store. We've got toilet paper, dude. And that's not only beneficial for us. Like, here's the thing. This isn't just beneficial for you. This is beneficial for society at large because now you are not demanding those resources at times when they are very lean. So when there is a shortage on something and there's a supply chain problem or something, the people who aren't as prepared as you or the people who just aren't as prepared in that way, like maybe I just not up to date on my toilet paper storage and I need some toilet paper, <laughs> but you're not going to the store and buying it because you have it. So there's more there for me. Right. So it's just it's better for everybody. It's not hoarding. Hoarding is when you buy it all when there is none. Hoarding is when there's a toilet paper shortage and the pallet of toilet paper arrives and you go buy the whole pallet. That's hoarding. When you buy it, when there's already tons of toilet paper on the shelves and you're storing it, that's not hoarding. And it goes for any of this stuff. You know, there's nothing. People will try to make you feel bad about this. People will watch shows like Doomsday Preppers and say those people are insane. And they're right. Those people are insane. That show is not realistic. But it makes people who just take a little bit of security, like in mind, people like to equate that. And that's that's not fair, <laughs> you know, to us. But it's, you know, it, it does happen. So... You know, sometimes people give you shit about it, too. And it's just, you know, fuck them. They're, you know, while you're eating your canned prime rib, maybe you can give them some of your crappy beans and rice, you know, <laughs> when they come begging at your door. Right. But uh, but yeah, no, that's f f final. Final thought is just that's a very realistic example where we all experience going to the grocery store and something we wanted not being there. That that's probably something most of us have never experienced ever in this country of that's... not being able to get something we wanted whenever we wanted it. It was crazy seeing like people posting pictures and, and videos of like going through the meat section of, of their grocery store and there being like nothing on the, sh on the shelf. And they're like, there's no meat. What are we going to do? I'm like, I got a whole freezer full. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're going to do, but I'm going to go grab something out of the freezer and I'll be fine for shit. I, I've probably got a good six, eight months worth of meat, like between, uh, between all of the refrigerators and freezers we've got on the property, I, I can make it for a long time without having to go to a store. So like, you know, uh, and by that time I'll have killed enough deer and, and <laughs> rabbits and everything else. That I don't, I still won't need to go to the store. So yeah. Well, awesome. This is a good start. Um, we'll, we'll have some conversations between now and the next time we do this and, and, uh, because I'd really like to talk about, uh, since you have your own uh, seed supply. Um, oh, yes. I'd, I'd like to talk about, uh, you know, seeds and and planting and the gardening side of it and what to grow. Uh, there, there are tricks to gardening that um, sometimes anything that you have sunflowers close to uh, the they are not it is not going to grow the sunflowers will suck all the life out of everything in their proximity uh learn that the hard way 
<laughs> when uh, my wife went like got very carried away with wanting to put sunflowers in one year and everything near the sunflowers after I finally got fed up and chopped the sunflowers down. Then all of a sudden we got like this spring of life in our garden. I was like, Oh, Oh, now I, now I see. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about the gardening side of stuff. You raise animals for meat purposes. I'm, we did when I was younger, I'm, uh, working towards getting to that point here on our, on our property. Uh, so we'll talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to have a lot of fun with this and hopefully every episode people pick up on some stuff that'll help them figure out how to be a little more self-sufficient and a little more prepared for just, you know, survival. Yeah. If um, anybody wants to holler at me, if anybody has any questions, feel free to holler. Um, I'm on, I don't know, you know, the socials really Instagram is probably the main one I'm on these days. So you know, look for me on there. You can try me on Twitter, but I don't check that often. <laughs> Just keep tagging him. He'll eventually check it. Uh, <laughs> One of these days, I'll get to you. <laughs> well, Dag, thanks for being on tonight. Uh, look forward you to too, continuing yeah. this. Yep. And for everybody watching and listening, uh, be sure to tune in next week when I will be joined by Mark Mentz for the first of a series that he and I are going to be doing where we're talking about the history they don't teach in school. And uh, our first topic will be Richard Nixon. So be sure to tune in next Friday? I can't remember the date. Anyway, tune in next week uh, when we cover that. Thanks for being here, and I will catch you next time. Later, guys. Peace. Before you go, make sure you check out our great sponsor, Agorist Acres. Now, agoristacres.com, you can find over 100 varieties of seeds. They've got vegetables, flowers, all kinds of stuff. They've got heritage brands, everything that you want to start any kind of garden that you need. It's free shipping on any order of $20 or more. They've got cool packaging and most of the seeds come in a fancy glass vial, no paper envelopes. They accept US dollar and crypto and can easily take either at checkout. Now be sure to head over to agoristacres.com and anything that you get, use the promo code FCT at checkout for 10% off your order. I say all the time, that you need to be starting your own garden, you need to be growing your own food, you need to be getting off the grid and becoming less dependent on grocery stores and stuff like that. Agorist Acres is a great first start. They have got everything you need for whatever kind of garden you want. Great people, great product, highly recommend. So go check them out.